Good morning and welcome to the historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We pray that you and your loved ones are all in good health. While we are in lockdown, the regular operations of the Basilica still continue. You can donate to the Basilica Parish online or you may drop off your envelopes at the parish office mail slot. We thank you for your continued support of the Basilica P Parish. Our presider today is Archbishop Peter Hunt. <clears throat> and our gathering chant is number 561 in our Catholic Book of Worship. O God beyond all praising, 561. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. We come together through this live stream mass to give God praise on this second Sunday of Lent. Every Lent, uh, the second Sunday, is uh, the Sunday in which we hear the gospel passage of the transfiguration, of Jesus going with Peter and James and John up in the mountain and being transformed before them. That we may worthily enter into this celebration and seek the Lord's blessings upon ourselves and our society this difficult time, we pause to call to mind God's goodness and to ask forgiveness for our sins. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 
a reading from the book of Genesis. God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham. And Abraham said, here I am. God said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Morah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. When Abraham and Isaac came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took his knife to kill his son. What the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, and, Ab and he said, here I am. The angel said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up, offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you, and I will make an offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies. And by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing from, for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. The word of the Lord. A response to Psalm 116, I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who was at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. The word of the Lord. your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Peter did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them. And from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what this rising from the dead could mean. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When I reflect on the first reading that we heard today about Abraham going to sacrifice his son Isaac, uh, there's always two things that strike me. Uh, The first one is the incredible faith that Abraham has in God, that he trusts him so much that he's willing to sacrifice his son. Uh, Abraham, as you know, is the father of faith, not only for the Jewish people and for the Christian people, but also for the Muslim people. And it's easy to see why he's considered the father of faith in terms of the great faith that he has. The other thing that strikes me 
is the prophetic symbolism uh, of this passage. In this passage, we see a father offering up his son. And the son carries the wood on which he is to be uh, sacrificed. Uh, it's a beautiful image, a uh, prophetic image of what will happen with God the Father giving his son Jesus in sacrifice for our sins. Also, we see here that when the angel tells Abraham not to sacrifice his son, he turns and he sees the ram who is caught and he sacrifices the ram, a lamb. Uh, an image again of how God gives his son, gives us the lamb of God uh, to, to expiate our sins, to keep us from death, from the death of sin. In the gospel passage today, Jesus seeks to build up the faith of Peter and James and John because he knows what is coming and he knows their faith will be tested. And so he brings them up the mountain and is transfigured before them to strengthen their faith, to help them that they can trust as Abraham did. And in the second reading, Paul speaking to the Romans uh, is trying likewise to give them a strength of faith that will be unshakable. He says, who can separate us from the love of God given what God has done for us. This image of faith and of strengthening the faith and of trusting is very strong in today's readings. But when I was preparing uh, my homily for this weekend, uh, and I looked at the commentary in The Living with Christ, uh, Brent Salkeld of Regina uh, gives a commentary on today's readings, he says something that struck me. I, I, I never thought of it that way in terms of the first reading. He says, while it is strange for us to read of a God asking for human sacrifice, that was nothing out of the ordinary in Abraham's world. The bewilderment, bewilderment we feel reading this passage is in fact a result of the text's own success. It is because of the story of Abraham and Isaac that human and child sacrifice looks the way it does to us. And he goes on, he says, human sacrifice is not some aberration in human history. In one way or another, it is the norm. The other gods humans have worshipped whether they go by ancient names like Baal and Moloch or modern names like choice and national security have always demanded what is most precious, our sons and daughters. It is only the God of Abraham that does not demand but rather provides the sacrifice. Uh, very interesting uh, comment. Uh, and uh, very thought-provoking. You know, we tend to, coming from our Christian background, the idea of a, offering up a human sacrifice, offering up a child, it, it seems like a terrible thing. And it is, given the faith that we come from, given the teachings that we have received through our church and through Jesus Christ. When I look at these readings within the light of that particular commentary, it strikes me that when I go back to the second reading where Paul says, what can separate us from the love of God? The answer is nothing outside us, but we ourselves can separate us from the love of God. If we do not do what the Father tells Peter and James and John to do in our gospel passage. If we do not do what Abraham did, Abraham listened to the voice of God. The Father says in the gospel today, this is my beloved, listen to him. Are we willing to listen to Jesus and with trust and faith 
do what he calls us to do. I think we have to be very careful about listening to voices. Uh, Sometimes that can get us into great danger and difficulty. We have to discern the voices that we hear. But do we take time to go up the mountain, to spend time alone with the Lord, to allow him to speak to us in our heart? And then hearing God speak to us, do we take time to discern if we are understanding correctly? That's what spiritual direction is all about. I think it was Teresa of Avila that said that the person who gives, who directs themselves has a fool for a director. We need at times to take what we think we hear the Lord saying to us and bring it to a wisdom person, a discerning person, a spiritual person who can help us to discern. It can help us to be sure that the voice we are hearing is the Lord's and that we are interpreting it well. Lent is a special time for us to journey with the Lord. Uh, Many of us have done that this past week with the Lenten Parish mission that took place here at the Basilica Parish. And certainly throughout Lent, one of the the, uh, Lenten practices we are called to engage in is prayer, taking time to step back to be with the Lord. Jesus took Peter and James and John up the mountain so that they could have a time where they could be with him and listen to his words. Not only to listen to him, but to see what it was that he wanted to show them. As we continue in our Lenten season, and as we continue in this Mass, let us ask the Lord to help us to journey with him, to listen to his voice, and to allow him to guide us, so that we might, with true faith, continue to follow him, no matter where he calls us to go, trusting him as the father of faith Abraham did, seeking always to follow the advice of our heavenly father and listen to the voice of Jesus Christ, our Savior. God bless you. Let us now together profess our faith in the God of love and mercy using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Jesus has assured us that wherever two or more are gathered in his name, he is present in their midst. Confident of God's presence here among us, we offer to him now our prayers of petition. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and our Bishop Peter, that during the Lenten season, they may continue to lead the church in a renewal of our mission to reach out and bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our global leaders, that all may work to create political, economic, and social stability and bring Christ's compassion, justice, and peace to all our world community. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us during the season of Lent, that our prayer, sacrifice, and acts of almsgiving may offer hope and comfort to all who lack material and financial resources. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are impacted by this virus pandemic, for the sick and the isolated, and we also pray for the protection of our healthcare workers and other essential workers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our archdiocesan efforts to bring healing to those affected by abuse, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick recommended to our prayer, for those in our homes, hospitals, and long-term care health facilities, and for those who provide compassionate care for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, that they may rise to new life, and for all who mourn their loss, they may find comfort and love and compassion of others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause for a moment to bow our heads and offer our own personal intentions. For all of these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear the prayers that we offer you this morning, both those we have spoken aloud and those that are in our hearts, for they are offered through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us from our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death on the holy mountain, he manifested to them his glory, to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim.
created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John the Baptist, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. confidence in God's goodness, trusting in the Lord Jesus, we offer the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. <clears throat> Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that, that you should enter under, under my roof, roof but, but only say, say the word and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion, a prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. <clears throat> Amen.
our communion chant 6.2 and our celebrate in song, Dona Nobis Pacem. Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now in the things of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to join with me in praying the prayer of Pope Francis to Mary for help and protection during the coronavirus pandemic. O oh, Mary, Mary, you always Mary shine in our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, help the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide, so that, as in Cana of Galilee, we may, we may return, return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Under your protection, we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God, do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever and keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Our missioning chant, 519 in our CBW, to Abraham and Sarah. Tree rich and fair, you need.
From Abraham and Sarah arose a pilgrim race, dependent for their journey on God's abundant grace. And in their heart was written by God this saving word that you shall.